Good morning from a slightly drizzly and slightly cold Retford station. I've just got the train up from King's Cross to here, changing uh, onto the low level platforms to get my northern train in a minute as we head into Lincolnshire uh, to do the new least used station there as per the last set of stats. But as you'll have seen from the title of the video, this is slightly unusual as the whole thing has been generated by AI. So welcome to the AI generated new least used station in Lincolnshire. All right, haven't started the AI bit yet. Uh, I will make it clear on screen when that is the case. Just uh, hanging out at the low level platforms at Retford first. If you've never been here or changed here, uh, you should know that platforms one and two up there are where the East Coast mainline are, mainly fast, some stopping services on the East Coast mainline. And then the uh, Sheffield to uh, Lincoln trains, Northern, three, four. They're kind of like a good two minute walk off of platforms one and two to get down to here. Um, Google Maps even shows them as two separate stations, which is uh, always uh, amusing. Um, and the train I'm about to get is the 1027, uh, and it's stopping at Brig and Curtin Lindsay. Curtin Lindsay, by the way, is now the new least used station uh, in Lincolnshire, because figures change from year to year. In fact, when I looked at the top 10 stations in the last set of uh, statistics, uh, I realized that it was the only station in the top 10 that I'd never actually got out at, or sort of done properly in some form or another, like a video or whatever. So it's been on my, uh, it's been on my to come and do it but the interesting thing and I will put a map up we'll throw a map up uh, the interesting thing on the brig line is that it used to get just uh, a Saturday only service three return trains on a Saturday which even then for a while uh, for about a year saw no trains uh, whatsoever but then when the service came back they then interestingly took away the Saturday service and just put in a Monday to Friday one return trip, so one train in each direction service. So is it better to have one return trip Monday to Friday or three return trips just on Saturdays only? Uh, and then we'll get on the train, uh, I'll discuss the AI part in terms of what we programmed it to say, and then we'll start the AI section when we get to Curtin Lindsay. So we're at Gainsborough Central, just as we wait for the train to leave. The train will get to Kurt and Lindsay next. I need to explain what's happened here. I've got my friend Kirk, thanks Kirk. Uh, he's got chat GPT uh, as the AI to uh, write a script for me. I basically said to him, could you ask it, ask chat GPT, to write a script for a Jeff does a least use station video. Um, he put in, you're a script writer for YouTuber called Jeff Marshall. He would like a script for a video about a least used station, Curtin Lindsay in Lincolnshire. The video should be about five minutes long. Jeff likes his videos to be factual and would never mislead his viewers. Uh, so it's important any details given in the script are accurate. It's important that you include some of or all of Jeff's video tropes. For example, if there is a car park, he will visit it. And would like to give an idea of the number of spaces. If there is a bin bag, he will show a picture of it. He likes doing weird shots, such as lying down on the ground. Remember that at the end of the video, we need to give the usual YouTube stuff about liking and subscribing. Feel free to ask any questions that may help. Otherwise, please stop providing a short outline of the video. We'll then flesh out the individual scenes and dialogue later on. Uh, ChatGPT then came back with the script. Uh, Kirk showed it to me. We then sort of uh, fed it a few more replies and iterations. And basically on about the fourth or fifth iteration, we came up with a script that we were happy with. So um, Curtin Lindsay is the next stop. We'll fade to black. When we fade up, everything uh, that you see and hear me say is as per the script, as per ChatGPT. Three two, three stops. The next stop is Curtain Lindsay. Hello everyone, I'm Jeff, and welcome to another adventure where we explore the least used stations in the UK. Today, we are at Curtin Lindsay in Lincolnshire. Curtin Lindsay is one of those stations that you might have never heard of, and there's a good reason for that. This station is one of the least used in the entire country. In fact, in the last year, it only had a handful of passengers. Today, we're going to take a closer look at this station, learn about its history, explore its features, and venture into its immediate vicinity to see what we can find. So, without further ado, let's dive into the history and facts about Curtin Lindsay Station.
Curtin Lindsay Station, located in the town of Curtin in Lindsay, North Lincolnshire, has a fascinating history that dates back to the mid 19th century. The station was officially opened on July the 1st, 1849, by the Manchester, Sheffield, and Lincolnshire Railway. It served as an important stop along the route connecting the town to larger cities and towns in the region. In its prime, Curtin Lindsay Station was bustling with activity. It had multiple tracks, a goods yard, and even a signal box. The station was an essential part of the community, providing transportation for both people and goods. However, as the years went by, the station's significance began to wane. The rise of road transport and the reduction of local rail services led to a decline in passenger numbers. Today, Curtin Lindsay Station is served by just a few trains each week, making it one of the least used stations in the UK. The goods yard and additional tracks have long been removed and the station now just has a single platform. Despite its limited services, the station is well maintained. There is a shelter, a ticket machine, and some seating available for passengers. Additionally, the station building, which is no longer in use, still stands as a reminder of the station's past. While it may not be as busy as it once was, Curtin Lindsay Station still holds a special place in the hearts of the local community. It serves as a link to the past and a symbol of the important role that railways have played in shaping the region. And now that we know a bit about the history of Curtin Lindsay, let's take a closer look at the station and its surroundings. The car park here is quite small, with only a handful of spaces available. Despite the limited number of services, it's good to see that there is still some parking available for those who need it. And here we have the obligatory bin bag. It's always interesting to see what kind of litter accumulates at these lesser used stations. As you can see, the platform is quite basic. There is a shelter, a ticket machine, and some seating. The ticket machine is a bit old, but it seems to be in working order. It's surprising to see a functioning ticket machine at a station with such low numbers. The seating is adequate, and the shelter provides a bit of respite from the elements. It's clear that some effort has been made to maintain the station and keep it comfortable for the few passengers who use it. Wow. And just for fun, here's a view from the ground. <laughs> it's always interesting to see things from a different angle. From down here, you can really appreciate the simplicity and quietness of the station. <clears throat> and as I walk into the town of Curtin and Lindsay, here's a quick word about today's sponsor. So if you use the internet a lot like I do, you may be aware that there are companies on the web that collect your data, known as data brokers, and they then sell the data that they have about you on to others. Now you can go around to all the individual companies that you know of and ask them to remove your data, but there could be hundreds of them that you'd have to contact in different ways, and sometimes they might even refuse your request. So that's why there's one company that will do all the hard work for you and clean up all your digital data on the internet for you. And that's what today's sponsor, Incogni, does for you. Sign up with them, tell them to work on your behalf, and they will go ahead and do all the hard work for you. And you can log in and check to see who they've contacted and what progress has been made. And you'll start to be notified from companies that your data has been removed. And this could just be something simple where you've signed up for a newsletter or loyalty card and yet your data is used to contact you about something else from somebody else that you might not even know. Incogni will clean all this up for you and make it go away. If you want to know more, it's worth looking at the promo here. Go to incogni.com forward slash Jeff and the first 100 people get 20% off a great deal. There's a link down in the description below. <clears throat> Now let's take a look around the immediate vicinity of the station. As you can see, the area surrounding the station is mostly residential. There are a few shops and businesses, but it's predominantly houses. The town of Curtin in Lindsay, although small, with a population of around 2,500 people, has a quiet charm. It's peaceful, with a rich history and a strong sense of community. A 
Over there, you can see the St Andrew's Church, one of the town's most prominent landmarks. St Andrew's Church dates back to the 13th century. It's not just a place of worship, but also a historical site that attracts both locals and visitors. And now, I'm sat in the green. This is a lovely open space in the middle of town. As you can see, the green is a beautiful area with well-maintained lawns and trees. It's a popular spot for locals to relax and enjoy the outdoors. And now, let's head to a spot back near the station where we can get a good view of the railway. From here, you can see the railway line. It's always interesting to see trains passing by. Well, that's about it for our tour of Curtin and Lindsay and its immediate vicinity. I hope you enjoyed exploring the lesser known part of Lincolnshire with me. Well, there you have it. That's Curtin Lindsay Station and a little bit of the town itself. A lesser known part of Lincolnshire, but definitely worth a visit. I always find it fascinating to explore these less frequented places and uncover the stories and sights that they have to offer. And I hope you enjoyed coming along on this adventure with me. If you did enjoy this video, it would mean a lot to me if you give it a thumbs up and don't forget to subscribe to the channel so you don't miss out on any future videos. Thank you so much for watching. <laughs> I'll see you in the next video. And we'll just wrap up with a non-AI part at the end, so uh, this bit is not scripted. Just to say uh, that my satirical tone throughout this video uh, has squarely been aimed at the AI nonsense here, this script that it wrote. Curtin Lindsay itself is this beautifully quaint, hundreds of years old little market town in Lincolnshire. Um, it's got this amazing town hall there. Uh, there's like a marketplace pump there. I'm sat in the market square. I just had the most amazing cake from the local family bakers there. I didn't even mention the windmill that's up the way. You could spend a day in Curtin Lindsay just, you know, come to check it out and just having a fabulous day out. Um, um, served by the, the one a day train. Boy, Curtin Lindsay really needs, and Brig really needs some more trains. Come on Northern, get on it. But I think that just goes to show to me how soulless is how I describe it, an AI script is. And you know, the reason why YouTube works and works well if you're doing it properly, um, because any old idiot could just turn up at a station and go, I'm here and we're doing this and look at that. But the way to do it well is to have a purpose and a reason and tell a story. And if you're telling a story that's interesting to you and you manage to make it interesting to the viewer and you bring them along with you, then that's what makes YouTube work and good videos work. This isn't that. This is just kind of like spouting facts and it's got no soul to it, no character. You need somebody to engage and be excited and get the audience to be excited with you. And I deliberately was a bit satirical so as to not be like that. So I think at the moment, uh, my job is safe. We're all safe. In the future though, I don't know. Discuss that one in the comments below. Uh, AI at the moment sort of does an okay -ish job, but it's got to get really good before it replaces humans. That may yet happen in our lifetime. We'll see. Oh, by the way, this tells you to press subscribe, so you should, you should probably do that.